Devin Pike of the Dallas International Film Festival. A ridiculously talented slate of documentary directors have brought their films to us in 2014 for the documentary competition here at the festival. Brothers of the Blacklist is one that I followed because the I, I was working on a radio show that actually followed this civil rights case. One of the longest litigated civil rights cases, not civil rights, but just judiciary gone wrong. And the director, Sean Gallagher, is here. First off, thanks for bringing this film to the festival. A phenomenally powerful film. And I'm curious when the first time you heard of the 125, am I getting the number right? Yes, yes. Uh, 125 young black men who were questioned and accused of rape. And their, the process of guilty until proven innocent from the, from the prosecuting authorities. I'm curious the first time you actually heard about the case. Right. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really honored to be in Dallas. But um, the first time I heard about the case was I actually went to the school where the incident took place, SUNY Oneonta, which is in upstate New York. Uh, I heard about it uh, during my senior year of the co at the college. And I considered myself a very informed student on the campus. I was very active in programs, and I had never heard about it. Uh, the, the town, the community, and the school had essentially swept the whole incident under the rug. Uh, and it makes sense when you really think about it. Uh, a college town has a whole new population coming in every four years. It's a totally new thing. Uh, so institutional memory really does vanish at a college campus. Uh, so I had never heard of it. Uh, all the students had never heard about it. So it really became important to me for this story to get out there. The, the original assault happens in 1999 and... Uh, 1992. 92. Yeah, it goes God, way I, back. I'm yeah. completely wrong on that. I apologize. <laughs> so when you look at the, the long tail on the investigation and so many people were brought in for questioning, the original lead goes cold. And one of the things that your film takes great pains to, to document is the, the institutional denial of the evidence that was there for anybody to look at if they just wanted to follow the right path. Yeah, I mean, there's two wrongs in here to, to focus on, and that's what the film does. It focuses on the wrongs of the police, uh, the state police, the local police, the school police, but it also does focus on what the school did, the administrators. Uh, it was immediate denial. It was immediate concern of being sued by the students. And uh, where a college should be there to support the students, they completely uh, disregarded them and silenced them. And on top of that, they were worried about next year's enrollment from the, the incoming freshman class and the reputation of the school. And will people want to go to a state-sponsored school that is even that has this even 15, 20 years in their past? Mm -hmm. And it, it, you see that trigger. You see uh, how one thing can affect other things. Uh, four years later, uh, the enrollment was completely down at the school. Uh, guidance counselors at high schools were telling the parents not to send their uh, their kids to the school. Uh, you know, an odd thing that really I never noticed at first but really started connecting is um, this is not the first time Oneana has been in the spotlight in a documentary. Um, oddly enough, uh, Todd Phillips, the director of The Hangover, his first film was a documentary about uh, hazing that won at Sundance. And uh, it put a spotlight at SUNY Oneonta and the hazing incidents that were going on there. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time while making this, but I made the connection that that was filmed in 1997. This was a few years after the blacklist. What happened was a lot of the fraternities at the college and sororities, they, uh, in support of the students that were uh, being, being profiled, they walked off the campus. They became unrecognized to the school. Then all these students started coming in with lower GPAs. They were coming in to party. It became a party school. And eventually it led to all this hazing, which still consists today. So it's amazing to see how one thing can affect another. With both of those incidents, you're looking at uh, an, an administration that is probably throwing up walls. You've got a law enforcement agency, both on a, a local and a state level, who are throwing up walls because not only do they not want to open themselves to litigation, but also to public scorn and ridicule. How hard was it for you to get people on camera to even talk about this from their perspectives? Uh, unfortunately, there was silence. Uh, the administrators, the police, they either told me they did not want to talk about it or they just did not respond. I, I went to their houses and left letters in their mailboxes, so I know they got it. But uh, you know, in, in the end, as much as I would have loved to have given them the opportunity to share their thoughts, I think the silence speaks for itself. Um, I don't think this was done by the administrators as a, a racist act. This was uh, an ignorant act. They did not think about what they were doing. 
Uh, they did not think about the consequences, and really it's a case of insensitivity. Uh, you're talking about a place uh, where there were not that many black families, and they started this drive in the 90s at the, the state colleges in New York, uh, this drive for diversity on the campuses. So every year there was more and more black students from urban areas coming to these upstate towns, and these towns weren't ready for it. They were not uh, sensitive to uh, the experiences other people have had in their lives. Have you had a chance to screen this in the Oneonta um, area? Yes, we did, uh, we did a private screening for those that were featured in the film. It was important for me to have them see it first. Uh, it was a really emotional screening, a uh, really small group uh, that are around the Oneonta area. Unfortunately, uh, Edward Bo Whaley, who's the main subject of the film, he walked out after five minutes. He still has not seen the film. Uh, it's just too emotional for him. Have you uh, spoken to him afterwards just to... I, I still speak to him, uh, but very briefly, it's, it's pretty obvious he kind of doesn't answer his phone, um, but I've talked to other people in the film that have talked to him. He's very happy with the film being out there. He, he loves that it's out there to, to other places, but it's something that he needs to, for his own health, uh, be, be away from. Uh, so we did that private screening in Oneana, but then we did a public screening uh, a couple of months ago uh, at the college, uh, packed the room up, uh, people out in the, uh, uh, out in the hallway. Because uh, again, this, this is new students that are unaware of the incident. Uh, so it was really great. Uh, a bunch of the people from the film came, and uh, it started a conversation in the town, which was really important. Uh, now the mayor has seen it. The mayor has talked to me about it. Uh, the police chief has seen it. And now they're working with the local NAACP to uh, work on more diversity events and work on, on working together. But if you hadn't made this film, if you had not had the perseverance to actually get the thing produced, it's still under the rug. It's still the quiet, dirty secret that hardly anyone even knows about. Absolutely, and I don't say that in an arrogant way of, I, I made the story come out, it's just, that is the truth. It was completely silenced, and it was a situation where these people felt like there was a reason for them to be silent. They felt like they were not right, because the courts showed them that they were n not supposed to be talking about this. Uh, the school made them feel that way. Uh, a lot of them are teachers now. A lot of them do not tell their students about this. Some of them teach social studies and history, and they won't even tell their students about it because they feel like they were silenced. What are your hopes for the film as far as um, either release or just doing screenings around the country to raise awareness that this could happen at any community at any time? Right. Um, I just want to start a conversation, and I think the most important place to just have that dialogue is on college campuses. That's where the incident took place, so uh, my goal is to really, in the fall, take this to as many colleges as possible and have that conversation. Uh, you know, the, the dialogue on the SUNY Oneana campus was great, but actually a few years back I had taken it to the school uh, with just an original interview I had done with Bo Whaley back in 2007, the first interview I had done. And the idea was, let's show this, and then I will go and talk to the students afterwards. And it became clear right away that the students didn't want to talk about what happened then. They wanted to talk about what was going on now. They had concerns about what was still going on in their college campus, that they felt that they were still silenced there and marginalized. So uh, it really is a triggering point, I think, for college campuses to, to have a discussion about this. It's 2014 now. We, we, there are times when we look at race relations in America, and we, we think we've made great strides, and then something looks, makes us look and say, no, we're, we're not even close to the goal line yet. When you look at projects like your own or other bits where it's, it, it's, it's definitely still a race issue, do you look at it and say, we've, we've, we've made progress, but we, there's still so much further to go with it? Absolutely, I think we have made progress. I, I think that's denial if you don't think we have, but at the same time, we are nowhere close to it. Um, just in the town, as much as I'm saying it's a great reaction that we've had from students and from people in the community uh, who are realizing this isn't something to run away from, this is something to learn from. Uh, we don't need to be afraid of what people did 20 years ago. This is something that we can have to our advantage to have this conversation. Um, I think. Uh, it it's still has so many people who are in denial of why that was wrong, especially in the Oneana community. There's still people who don't have all the facts yet, and that's why I hope they do see this film and understand where the students were coming from. You can catch more information about Brothers of the Blacklist. Um, is, is there a website you've started along with the project? Yep, uh, brothersoftheblacklist.com uh, is where you can go for all the information. And you can always find about these films and all of the films at the festival at dallasfilm.org. We also keep tabs on our films that are alumni of the festival so you can find their distribution points as well. It is a fantastic film. 
very powerful. Thank you so much for Thank bringing you, it to the festival. It's a show, an honor to have you. I appreciate it. You bet.